Hey, don't go jumping around the directory. We've got more coming up. We'll be right back. So Perry, we spent a lot of time on the M16 and its variants. So are we ever going to move on to a new gun? Yep. Okay, when? <laughs> well, right now. We're actually going to start talking about the submachine guns. But before we get to that, we need to take care of a few things. Like, for example, what is an assault rifle? So Perry and I thought we had a pretty good handle on what an assault rifle is when we started this podcast. But just like anything else, the more you find out, the more you realize how much you don't know. Boy, that's true. I always thought an assault rifle was used by some military in the world somewhere. You know, had a big magazine on it, select fire, full auto, semi-auto, and just generally looked really cool. And it does turn out that that describes all kinds of rifles. We found weapons that we thought were assault rifles weren't even rifles at all. We discovered there's yet another category called submachine guns. So what we found out what classifies a weapon as a submachine gun, first, is that it will not shoot rifle ammo, it only shoots pistol caliber ammo. That's right, Buck. A lot of these machine guns shoot pistol caliber, such as 9mm or 45 cal. And this is going to be one of the things that's going to classify it as a submachine gun. So another requirement is that it can fire full auto. Select fire is an option. And so today we're going to talk about Heckler. Whoa! What? You're not going to say Koch, are you? Well, we did in the first podcast. I know, and we caught tons of flack. Yeah. It's a German name, so I think they say something like Koch, Heckler, and Koch. That's right, but you know, this is enough talk. Let's move on to our first H&K model, the MP5. Yeah, it's a very good gun. You might have seen it in a lot of action films, so we're going to take a good close look at it. Sterling Morris from Impact Guns is going to run us through it. This is an HK MP5. Very popular with uh, law enforcement and SWAT teams. This one has a fixed stock. A telescoping stock can be put on it. It is a machine gun. So it does have the three position selector with safe, semi-auto, and full auto. The MP5 has a cyclic rate of roughly 800 rounds a minute. Comes with a 30 round magazine. This is a nine millimeter. There are different models of this exact configuration. Uh, there's the 9mm, the 223, and the 308. Each one, uh, one is a little bit bigger. This one has a little bit different charging handle. Okay. Once you've inserted a full magazine, you hit the charging handle just like that and your gun is loaded. To charge it, to load it. These have two different magazine releases. One is a standard side magazine release. The other is the paddle release, which is a little bit more e easier to reach and easier to get to for unloading and unloading your magazine. And with, as same as the ARs, they are, these are com different components that you can get onto these guns. You can switch out the, fur the fore end with uh, lights, lasers, vertical grips. Uh, they're usually all one piece integrals. This one has a three lug on the barrel which means it, you can put on a suppressor just by pushing it on and turning them and you've got a suppressor. This is a ghost ring sight setup. It has very large apertures, so easy sight acquisition. Hole, round hole in the back, round in the front with a post.
I'd like to mention an interesting side note about submachine guns that fire pistol ammo. Have you ever noticed that you see them more in law enforcement situations and not so much in combat situations? Yeah, I would imagine that they're not very accurate at long distances, but why? Well, interestingly enough, a uh, pistol caliber can't penetrate a bulletproof vest, not like rifle ammo can. So if you're up against a sophisticated enemy, you could be in a lot of trouble. Where did you hear that? A very cool demonstration that's given on YouTube. Now you iTunes users out there, go ahead and click on this link right here below. That's right, right in the movie, and your browser should open up to the demonstration. So if you're in YouTube, go ahead and pause the show and get the web address. I guess we'll wait for you while you do it. Don't forget to come back though, because we're going to cover the H&K 51 next. Okay, now we're going to move on to the H&K 51. Now, does this gun still fit under the classification of a submachine gun? Well, that's an interesting question, because even though it's compact like the MP5, it shoots a rifle caliber, the 308. Here. Take a look at this photo, which compares the differences between calibers. The largest round on the left is a 308, also known in the metric system as the 7.62 by 51 millimeter NATO round. The center round is a typical M16 round, the 5.56 by 45 millimeter NATO, or the 223, and to the right is a 9 millimeter pistol round. So a few episodes ago, when we showed you that compact M4 that was chambered for a 9 millimeter round. I guess that weapon could be classified as a submachine gun. I think you're right, Buck. But let's take a look at the H&K 51. This is the H&K 51. This is a 308. V big difference between the MP5 and the this 51 is the caliber. Otherwise, most of the other functions are the same. This is also in full auto, and with the muzzle brake that is on this gun, it makes it very controllable. Yeah, the muzzle brake that is on this particular weapon, it is very effective. It makes it very controllable. It also makes it very loud. This one is fitted with a Trigicon ACOG sight. These are designed so that there is a red dot within the reticle that requires no batteries. It is using fiber optic technology through this collector here. It also has tritium inside, just like on uh, the standard pistol night sights, so that if you do go uh, into no light situation or very low light, it will still glow and you'll still be able to see your reticles. It's on a claw mount system that can be easily be removed and this one does have the telescoping stock. Which does make it a very compact gun in 308. As this one is actually transferable and this one is a $15,000 gun. Did he just say that you could buy that gun for $15,000? Wow! $15,000. That's what's known as a transferable machine gun. And we're going to cover that in, in future, future episodes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. Now, about these episodes. We apologize that we're taking so long between shows but he's figuring out that it's getting a little bit difficult to keep up. <laughs> yeah, you're right. But it is nice to have a sponsor. Otherwise, Buck here has to pay for everything. Oh! Hey! My title is co-host, buddy. I ain't no... I've already got all these freaking IOUs that you gave me. You know what? I think it's about time to cash them in and get me a badass rifle. How about that? Well, next time we're going to talk about more H&K models, so stay tuned and keep your fingers crossed too. We might Are you another... kidding me? You're just gonna, you're just gonna change the subject. Every time I get to these IOUs, you start. Hey, change... Buck, Buck, have you seen my new magic app? What? What the? You still owe me.